All right, um, so we'll kick this off here. Welcome to the June 23rd meeting of the City of Davenport Zoning Board of Adjustment. The Zoning Board of Adjustment holds public hearings to consider the strict application of zoning ordinance, ordinance for hardship variances, special uses, and appeals. I'm Dan Darlin, Chairman of the Zoning Board of Adjustment. Members present today are from your left to right, uh, Bridget Boyd Carlson, Vice Chair, myself, Tom Quinn, and Angela Abach. Staff present are uh, Scott Copes, Matt Warderich, and Attorney Mallory Bagley. If you have mobile devices, please turn it off as it may interfere with the room's electronics. As we conduct our business, we expect that everyone here will conduct themselves in a respectful, courteous, and civil manner and will speak only after being recognized by the chair. The only exception to this standard is that the staff is expected to interject when necessary to ensure that we are properly conducting our business. If anyone wishes to speak on a particular agenda item, you'll be provided an opportunity to do so. When recognized by me, please step to the podium, introduce yourself, and provide your input. By practice, each person is only permitted um, one opportunity to speak. Exceptions to that practice is at my discretion. Uh, of course, if a board member asks a question of anyone, uh, they will be permitted to speak to answer that question. I'll ask that you keep your response limited to that specific question. Um, so the first order, okay, minutes. Um, any corrections to the minutes from our last meeting? Hearing none, may I have a motion to approve? I'll make a motion to improve um, last, or the minutes from our last meeting. Second. Second. And uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? And motion passes. Uh, first order of business today is request HV 2205 of Tammy Spidel on behalf of the Youth Justice and Rehabilitation Center for hardship variance at 4715 Tremont Avenue to reduce parking, skip the line, to reduce parking requirements for government official or office or facility. Table 17.10-2 requires one parking space for every 500 square feet of gross floor area. The site will provide 76 parking spaces for the 59,025 square foot facility. The government office rate is the closest related use to the proposed use. The zoning code does not have a specific parking rate for youth detention facilities. Is the applicant here? Excellent. Um, may I have the staff report, please? Scott Copes, Department of De Development and Neighborhood Services. Um, as stated in the description of this request, uh, our zoning ordinance doesn't have a specific uh, rate requirement for a youth, uh, youth home like this. Um, so that is why we're here today. Um, the office portion of the project is going to meet our required uh, rate for parking. Uh, and then there's been a, a formula proposed by the applicant in which the staff has um, accepted and, and recognized as acceptable. Um, this first slide just kind of shows you where the location is. Scott County uh, has a facility located next to the call center and out by Public Works. Um, so the purpose is here, we, you know, is to reduce the parking because we don't have that code section. Uh, the site will provide 46 parking spaces uh, for the 59,025 square foot facility, which will have 60 beds. And that's after both phase one and phase two would be completed. We're here today and we're gonna run the phase two numbers th through so that they don't have to come back later on okay. when phase two is completed. Uh, so the, the New facility will be two stories. Uh, the first floor is where the, the beds will be located, and the second floor will be office space uh, for uh, meeting with clients and attorneys and, and things of that nature. Um, 
as I said, so 54 spaces will meet the parking demand for the 20 full-time equivalent staff serving on the 60-bed facility. There are going to be four ADA parking space requirement provided, uh, and all ADA requirements will be met. This is just an overhead shot of the same lot that we had earlier. Um, you can see to the south is where Public Works has their fuel uh, station, and then further south of that is the 911 call center. The plan calls for the demolition of the front two buildings, and there's a rear storage building which will remain. And so the project is going to be, for the most part, on the first two thirds of the lot, and that rear one third will not be utilized. So this is just kind of what the building elevation looks like. And below they have the, the parking demand calculation that they came up with. So the full-time equivalent of 20 people plus the shift change when there's an overlap of 20 persons uh, plus the scheduled legal appointments, which two available rooms are, and that would be equivalent to four cars, plus scheduled family visiting appointments, which they're in control of. Um, would be two rooms available for six cars. Uh, so the total needs for the, the bed facility would be 50 spaces. And then if you add that to the 22 spaces needed for the office portion, the second floor of this building, that would generate a parking demand of 72 spaces needed. Um, they also add on the four ADA spaces for a total of 76 spaces provided. And so here's the site plan. There's parking that's going to be on the west side of the lot in front of the building, which would be along Tremont. And there's also parking on the side yard, which would be to the south and which would face the call center. And then I guess again here, you can see um, the white building towards the east is the building that's going to remain that's already present right now. Uh, we did notify uh, property owners within 200 feet. We have not received any calls or comments. Um, as far as the approval standards are concerned, uh, the proposed parkings shall meet more than shall be more than sufficient. Youth housed in this facility are transported to this location by law enforcement and do not require parking specifically for themselves. Physical conditions of the site do limit the use. Minimal areas are available for parking. Staff supports the parking reduction due to the detrimental impact of stormwater runoff. Um, so staff doesn't favor having additional spaces that would just be there to create additional runoff. Uh, parking requirements are limited, uh, are limit congestion in the street because that's the reason we have the parking requirements. This said development will not cause congestion in the streets. Character of the area will be protected. The site will have adequate parking spaces for the proposed use. Um, and our findings support those analysis sections. Zoning code does result in a hardship as applied. Physical and topographical conditions of the site do limit the use. Unique step circumstance has been established and essential character has been protected. Staff recommends the board adopt staff's finding and approve HB 2205 with a recommendation for approval based on the review of the pro approved approval standards and the findings as stated in the staff report. Uh, any questions by the board? Thanks, Scott. Is that currently uh, the, the Sheriff's Annex building? Is that the Yes, site I think we're that's what about? they call that, yeah. Okay. The existing facility, yeah. Right. Um, I knew there have been some discussions on that, but I didn't know that was a, a done deal, so. All right, any any questions from board? Sure. Just got to, it seems like not a lot of parking spaces for a facility of this size. It looks like you've done the math and you're comfortable with, I mean, this is a 50% reduction in what, what the ordinance would require. So that's a pretty steep um, reduction. It's like 45% just based on gross square footage. Actually, I don't know that I would call it a 50% reduction. Um, the table in the staff report. The 
first page of the staff report. Yep. Um, I guess it's actually in the technical addendum. It provides for every for every 777 square feet of area or square foot in this building, there is one parking space, and the code requires one to 500. So it'd have to be one to a thousand for it to be 50 percent. Uh, it's it's closer to one third would be the. the okay. Uh, I just took the 59,000 divided by 500. That's 118 spaces, and we're providing 76. That's roughly a not quite 50% reduction. But I guess my question would be is if, if there's an event where more parking is required, it wouldn't seem like it'd be a good idea to have people parking on Tremont, which is a fairly a fairly busy road. Right. What, 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 would, what would the plan be for overflow parking in the event? Um, we can have the applicant address that. Yeah. Um, there, there is parking available at um, the city of Davenport public works facility that might be potentially used, but I, I'll let the applicant address that. Sure. Um, when staff's doing their report, we didn't, uh, this isn't the type of facility that holds events for people. Um, it's strictly for, for, the, for the youth who are there. Um, they're not shopping this office space out for use by other departments to come hold events or anything like that. Um, so that's what staff was looking at when we made our analysis. Okay, thanks. Please come up to the podium and give us your name, position, and tell us why you're here. All right, um, anything else? Questions from the board? No, thanks. All right, um, board discussion. Thoughts? Sure. I, I would like to, um, to say that staff's report was based upon the proposed use and as suggested by legal, uh, a good protection would be uh, adding a condition to the hardship variance if it were to be approved. And the condition would be that any kind of change in the use would warrant a, a re-evaluation of parking needs at that sure. time. So if the, the lower floor was no longer used, so used solely or mostly for detention facilities and it required more parking, that it would, we would come back here. Questions then? Then uh, do we have a motion? Okay. 
I'll make a motion to approve um, the, the request uh, with the stipulation that if the use of the building changes, that it would require a, a reevaluation by staff. All right, so we have a motion to approve HV22-05 um, with the condition that if there's a change in the use, then it comes back before the CBA. Um, do we have a second? I'll second. Roll call, please. Boyd Carlson? Yes. Carlson, I'm sorry. Uh, Quinn? Yes. Aunt T. Layback? Yes. And Darlin? Yes. All right, so that's passed and concluded then. All right, um, the second issue before the board is request HV22-06 of Dan Hahn on behalf of Amy Havoc at 2208 North Zenith Avenue for a six foot solid privacy fence in the front yard set back along West Lombard Street, uh, section 17.09.030.h.2.a, limit solid fences within the front or reverse corner side setback to four foot in height and 70% open faces to six foot in height. Um, is the applicant here? Okay. Um, May I have a staff report, please? Scott Copes, DNS. Uh, this request today is for a fence which is going to be placed in the front yard of the property. And the fence is proposed to be a solid six foot fence. This diagram here shows where fences can be located on this corner lot. In the yellow area, you can have a four foot solid fence or a six foot open fence, which would be 70% open. So those are the two options for fences in uh, that location. Obviously you can be less than six feet or less than four feet, but that's the maximum height. Uh, in the green area, which is kind of the buildable area of the lot for the most part, um, you can have fences that are six foot tall and solid in that location. So if the fence were completely located in that green location, we wouldn't be here today but the fence is proposed to be south of the house along Lombard, and, and that triggers the, the need for the hardship variance. And quickly, this is just our diagram for what a solid fence is versus an open fence. An open fence needs to be 70% uh, of the superficial air surface consisting of regularly distrib distributed openings must be there. A solid fence is one that you cannot see through or you can only see through less than 70% of. Uh, and so the petitioner uh, yesterday submitted a, a, you know, a revised, not really a revised, but a more clear a diagram of where the fence is going to be. Um, the previous diagram didn't have the, uh, the property lines on it, and it, it had a distance of 153 feet for the lot depth, which is actually 125. So staff asked the applicant and they were gracious to propose, uh, show us this new diagram. I will note that um, at the top of this diagram, uh, let's see if I can find a laser pointer, but there's a 7.5 foot easement along the north property line in which it's a drainage and utility easement. And in that location, uh, a fence wouldn't be allowed. This diagram here shows a little bit better. Um, so we just wanna make note that that portion north of the garage there would not be allowed. It would have to be almost flush with the garage to stay out of that easement. Um, and here again is the original uh, diagram and I've read the, the difference in the depths. And the other difference was that the front yard to the south, uh, it appeared to be 33 feet on this diagram. In actuality, it's a 30 foot, approximately a 30 foot front yard. Um, so we've gotten to the purposes of the variance. Uh, as I stated, a six foot tall fence 
uh, is what they're asking for. It, it's not permissible by right. A solid fence in the front yard limited to four feet would be allowed by right. Um, or the petitioner could build a six foot fence, the same height they're proposing, but it would have to be an open fence, the, the open style I showed earlier. Um, this is the site um, from Google Street View. And this is the site from Google Street View with a mock-up of what the fence would look like. Uh, staff tried to get this as best could to scale. Uh, we erred a little bit on having the fence a little bit shorter than what, what it is. It's probably about five and a half in some and maybe five in others. But that's just a mock-up of what it would like if the applicant ha had their hardship variance granted. Um, this difference here is showing what a 70% open fence would look like. Um, it, it changes the character of the neighborhood considerably when it's an open fence. Um, staff did do notices to all property owners within 200 feet. Uh, we have not received any written comments, but we did receive three telephone calls. Uh, two of them were asking informational questions and one indicated they might be here today uh, to have comments. Um, staff uh, approval standards in our analysis, a fence can be built in the front yard. However, the petitioner wishes it to be built at a height and a style not allowed by the zoning code. And this is really a self-created hardship. Uh, there's no support for the variance. Number two, physical conditions of the site do not limit the use of the property. There are errors available for fencing, uh, both at a six foot height and a four foot height uh, with varying styles. Uh, number three, there's no unique circumstance on this property that prohibits construction of a fence in compliance with requ requirements. It's a straightforward flat lot. There's no topographic conditions or creeks or uh, other natural areas that prohibit this use of this property in a reasonable manner. And number four, character of the area will be altered by the fortress-like effect a solid six-foot fence, privacy fence would have. Um, staff's findings, uh, the zoning code does not result in a hardship as applied. Physical and topographical conditions of the site do not limit the use. Uh, unique circumstances not been established and essential character would be impacted. Staff's recommendation accordingly then is that staff recommends denial of HB 2206 as the request does not meet approval standards for hardship variance. Can you go back to the, um, I guess the revised um, diagram? There we go. So the black line is the fence? Correct. Proposed, okay. And south is the side of the house? So on the south there, the sidewalk is approximately two feet from the property line. That black line on the south is up to the property line. And the black line on the west or the left side goes up to the property line there as well. Uh, the portion north of the garage, that's the portion that uh, will have to be changed and modified. It cannot be in a drainage way. So it would be, they could have a fence approximately <clears throat> even with the garage on the north wall of the garage. All right. And then the house faces Zenith. Right, the front of the house faces Zenith, even though the zoning code considers the Lombard Street to be the front yard. Right. Scott, the, the red dotted lines, are those the, is that the drainage area? Correct, the Between red there? dash line is the easement lines, yep. And that's okay. shown a little bit better on oh, this there. Okay. one here. So that's what you meant when you said that it would right. have to stay so basically, basically from the on north the edge wall, of the... correct, yeah. So from that north wall, that garage north to their property line is, is an easement area in which buildings and fences and other structures cannot be built. So maybe, maybe it's a little off top. Can you go back to that view? So in the, in the third lot, is there a structure in there? That's correct. It looks like there's an accessory shed in there, and that's one of the items that wouldn't be allowed. And so when it's a drainage easement, it's a little bit different than um, like a utility easement. Drainage easements, uh, we like to make sure that there's are open uh, because the water needs a place to flow. Um, sometimes utility companies might grant a waiver to an easement 
with the ex with the exception that if they have to come in and do any work in their easement and if there's any pro personal property in there like fences or sheds they would remove them and if they get damaged it's at the expense of the owner to put them you know to replace them etc but that's always an agreement with uh, each specific utility provider the drainage ut easement is with the city and the city's hard and fast when it comes to not having structures in the the drainage way okay all right um, any other questions thank you all right uh, applicant you can yeah applicant go ahead and step up your name please okay And, and that was a conversation with the utility company, not with... So the purpose of the fence is just for security. It's not for a dog or a something. Okay. That will come in a minute. Um, is there is there any anything down the front of the house? Would a person still be able to come up to the garage, the house, the area between the house and the garage? Well, you, sure, but you just mean between the corner of the, of the large garage and the house, you're going to put something there? Yes, sir. Go 
Mr. Hun. Yeah, come on. The microphone won't pick you up unless you're at the podium because it's that square right above you. Yeah. Thank you. So. Southeast corner of the garage to the northeast corner of the house. Okay, got it. Questions of the board to the applicant. Where does, is a front door face Zenith? Yeah. Yes. Okay. And then the side front has the front Thank you. Yeah, go ahead, Tom. So, I mean, this might be a question for Scott. The, the, main, the main gist of this is that small section of fence along the south property line, that's that's really where, um, is that really so kind of the, the main concern here? Yeah, the, the one that has the shaded area. Can you go to that? There you go. So you'd have to, you'd, to, to put a fence on the south side, you'd have to move that fence back almost 25 feet. To, right Correct, the, the uh, a fence in the yellow area, either along Zenith or along Lombard, uh, would have to be a four foot open fence or a six foot, I'm sorry, a, a six foot open fence or a four foot tall solid fence. Um, okay. Either yard is the same restriction, whether it's along Zenith or along Lombard, that there's the can, same restriction as for as Can the, you explain for us how the, right? the um, side yard on the corner is considered like a front yard? Right, so the code applies to the front yard and a corner side yard, right. so what's the the area along la uh, zenith is actually called the corner side yard uh by zoning definition uh, but it has the same restriction uh, as the front yard um, so, so zenith is the front but the lombard is the corner side uh, yard. lombard is the front i should say and then zenith is the corner side yard Could you go back to the site? Yeah, I, I said it backwards. Yeah, there so, you go. Um, it's sorry it's about that. It's on Zenith. Yeah, okay. the, the, the Zenith is the corner side yard and the Lombard is the front yard. No. That's what it is. The, the front yard, by definition, is the least frontage. So the oh. least frontage is Lombard. Gotcha. Okay. That makes the so, south lot line the front yard. So even though the house faces Zenith, correct. It's not based on Zenith. The, yeah. The, the zoning ordinance bases the front yard based on the lot, not on how a builder will this build a house, because we don't know how they may or may not build houses when so, lots are so set the out. Shorter, the shorter of the two is automatically the front. Correct, and the Check. rear is the opposite of the front. Got it. Could, could you go back to the, the site plan that shows the location of the fence then? So there really, there really is no fence line along Zenith because it terminates at the corner of the house there. So really the, the big the, the big issue is the, the short section of fence along the south side there along Lombard. That, that would have to be moved Correct. up the, near the, the house. The portion that needs the hardship variance is all completely south of the dwelling. Yeah. That's correct. So the piece that parallels Lombard as well as the two perpendicular to that would have to be shortened up as well okay um any any more questions for the applicant or any questions for the applicant no all right i guess i i mean would you entertain rather than all the way out to the sidewalk would you entertain a compromise moving it closer to the home you know i guess that'd just be a, a question with is, is that would be a something that you might be, be might consider
So has there been crime in that area? Has your, the person that owns this home, has she checked with the police department and see how many you know, calls have been in that area and that kind of thing? Just for clarification, oh. staff did specifically ask for that uh, piece of evidence, and um, the applicant wasn't able to provide anything. Okay. Um, my quick question is, so besides the variance to be able to build into what they consider the drainage area, are you also asking to have it taller than what's allowed there? Is that what you're asking for? Because I'm confused. Well, regarding the drainage area, that was one of the variances that we requested from the applicant. We did ask for a couple of sizes of drainage area. For the south side, there was no drainage area. So that's where the variance was coming from. We just wanted to get all the way across to the south side to see what it's actually going to look like. The north side isn't before you today to make a determination. Yeah. Oh, OK. For building a drainage easement, easement wouldn't be within your authority. OK. That's, that's what I was questioning. I have yeah. a question for Scott. So, the f so he wants six foot be because he says it's taller. So, could you do a four foot solid and then like the open on top, like the two extra two feet of open fencing, or is that not? If the solid fencing is no taller than four feet, yes, there could be a open seventy percent open fence above there. That's okay. correct. Have you thought about that? Well, it seems to me that would give you, well, your concern is if it's four feet. I, appar apparently, I'm, I'm incorrect. Oh, you are? Okay, so sorry. In order to do the six foot fence at 70% open, it has to be completely open. What the heck? Yeah, the entire six foot um, surface area would have to be 70% open. Right. And with the lower four foot being solid, yep. then it wouldn't be. So, uh, yeah. Okay. It's a thought. All right, any other questions of board to applicant? All right, thank you. Um, is there anyone in the audience um, who wish to speak in favor of the request? Come on up. But, excuse me, come on up uh, to the podium and then give us your name. Okay. But we don't have that authority to modify the ordinance. I think he means modify the request. Oh. Well, that'd be a separate request. I don't know. A modified request would have to come back before yeah. this board, and we'd have to have a chance to evaluate what the changed request was. We can't do it at this meeting. Yeah, that's a concern. Right. All right. Well, that's, yeah, I mean, that's not. Yeah, appreciate your comments. Um, all right, anyone in the audience wish to speak in opposition to the request? All right, um, <clears throat> applicants, any final comments? Okay. We have that there because sometimes there's multiple people who speak and um, then you'd want to be able to address something, but okay. Uh, discussion. Um, 
microphone's not on. I'm looking at that picture. I mean, it does, that fence kind of sticks out like sore thumb, so. Well, there's, yeah, there's that. And I also think from a traffic obstruction of visibility uh, would be a concern. I mean, I feel bad that the applicant doesn't feel, or the homeowner doesn't feel safe in her own home. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know. Well, six foot open fence is still an option and would work, would address all of our concerns. So I, 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 do, I do agree with staff that I mean, that's probably not the best solution for that and, corner right there. And, and if security is a concern, is a six foot fence up at the appropriate line less secure than a six foot fence at a distance from the line, you know, so. Um, so it could still provide the security, which was why I asked what the purpose of, you know, if it's a dog or, you know, whatever. Um, all right, any other discussion? So this, go ahead. Oh, okay. Um, so the, the recommendation um, is that this did not meet the hardship variance. Um, so staff is recommended to deny it. But at this point, I would entertain a motion. Just, just to confirm, it would be a motion. We would, we motion in the affirmative. We motion to the affirmative. Yes. Correct. So I'd make a motion to approve the request. So we have a motion to approve request HB two two zero six. Do I have a second? Second. Roll call vote, please. Leave up. So just to clarify, a yes would be to go with the staff report. No. No, okay, so but, no. Yeah, the request, let's is, is hold up then. So just to clarify things, um, so we have we have a motion a second, so we can have discussion. The, the request is to build a six foot fence right up against the sidewalk and as was shown in the picture. So that's the request. The motion's been made to uh, approve that so voting yes, approve it, or no to not approve that. So, no for me. Boyd Carlton. No. Quinn. No. And Darlin. No. So, um, so I'm sorry, it did not pass. So um, you can you know, look at other options and, and bring them back if, if it gets into that situation. Thank you. Um, no other business, so I would take a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thanks, everyone.